Well, I do want to welcome everybody to the midweek service here at Cornerstone Baptist Church. And I want to say thank you for tuning in tonight to watch. And uh, I think that the service will be an encouragement and a help. Um, I'm looking forward to the message in just a few minutes. Uh, but before that, let's uh, we want to have a word of prayer. And then I want to cover some uh, quick uh, announcements and updates. And then we'll uh, kind of continue on through the service. So let's go ahead and uh, begin with prayer at this time. Our Heavenly Father, we just come to you tonight. We thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are the unchanging God that uh, is always in control, always good, even in scenarios like we find ourselves in tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd use this service to encourage us, to challenge us. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd meet needs. Lord, I'm sure that some are dealing with anxiety right now. Some are dealing with um, stress and some are dealing with uh, maybe even health issues right now. Uh, maybe some are dealing with uh, financial issues. Lord, whatever the situation is, I pray, Lord, you'd uh, meet needs as only you can. And I pray, Lord, you'd use the time together. And I pray, Lord, you'd use your word uh, to make a difference in our lives and to um, bring some great peace. Lord, I thank you for each one of our church family. Lord, I, I miss them. I want to be here with them. I want them here with us. Uh, but Lord, right now, that's not uh, not the plan. And so Lord, help us to uh, trust you and and uh, understand that your ways are not always our ways. And uh, But Lord, we do thank you for who you are. And uh, we just pray for your mighty blessings upon this service in Jesus name. Amen. Well, I do want to I usually say you may be seated right now, but you're probably already seated. But if you're still standing, you can be seated. <laughs> just so I can still say that right after I pray. But anyway, uh, so a couple quick announcements. This is a fun one to share with you. And uh, most of you may already know this, but uh, Judd uh, and Jennifer Krantz had their baby on Saturday. And uh, we, my wife and I went to go, got to go see them yesterday afternoon. And, uh, mom, and mom and baby are doing great. And uh, baby Emerson is just a uh, just precious and uh, just so thankful for how the Lord provided them with a beautiful baby little girl. So Emerson Eve Krantz was born on March 21st, and here's the statistics that a lot of the ladies like to hear. Uh, she uh, weighed uh, 7 pounds, 14 ounces, and was 19 inches long. So I think she's a keeper. You want to keep that one. And uh, so, but congratulations to the Kranz family. They've been coming for a long time and just uh, wonderful people. We just love their family. And uh, so congratulations to them. And um, who is next to, uh, to we, need a, we need another baby in the oven somewhere. So uh, Julie, are you, uh, she's here tonight, but uh, she's shaking her head no. So hopefully one of you will raise your hand in the comments and say, I will be the one. Who will be the one? The next one to be the uh, next expectant mother. Do we have any comments? Anybody volunteering tonight, Brother Jacob? No. No volunteers. All right. Well, hopefully one of these days we will have a volunteer on that one. All right. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, again our uh, live stream services. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. This is kind of the new reality in which we live. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite. I would much rather have you here. It's definitely a lot easier to speak to living people than uh, to pretty much an empty room and a couple cameras. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to normal. But for now, this is what we have to deal with. And so let's make the most of it and uh, be faithful to these services. Um, so our next one, of course, is Sunday at 1045 and then uh, Sunday uh, the next one after that is Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Um, I do want to mention, and I'm excited about this, this Sunday we're going to be adding in some music to our services. I don't know if Brother Blake's as excited as I am, but uh, I am uh, looking forward to that and uh, an opportunity for you to sing along in the services there at home and uh, just to enjoy the uh, hymns once again. So we'll be uh, doing that on Sundays um, morning and evening. Um, and then uh, this Sunday night, I want to mention this. We are having a guest speaker. And uh, I'm not going to let you know who it is uh, because I want it to be a surprise, but I will give you a hint. It's somebody that you all know and love. All right. And uh, it's going to be a good time together. We're also going to have a fun way to kind of interact with one another uh, during that service on Sunday night. So uh, 
be sure to tune in and and uh, you're not going to want to miss that time as well and i know there was some discrepancy on our bible trivia on sunday night and uh, it's not going to have to do with that it's not going to be speed it's just going to be uh getting getting something in uh, to the comments uh, and i think it'll be a, a fun time together on that and uh, speed won't matter okay so if you there's a little delay in your internet that's all right well it'll be it'll be just dandy um, speaking of interacting, I do want to kind of brag on our youth pastor a little bit. Uh, Brother Blake has been doing a great job staying in contact with the teens uh, while this whole situation has been going on. Uh, he set up a page called The Quarantine Service. Get it? Quarantine. Uh, and so he's uh, kind of make, made that a little bit of a wannabe dad joke. It's not going to be as good as a dad joke because he's not a dad yet. But anyway the quarantine service, and uh, they've been doing some fun things to stay connected, and then uh, tomorrow night they're going to be having a little bit of a teen service, uh, lack of a better term, but uh, he's going to be sharing a devotional with the teens, and so I do want to encourage the teens to jump onto that and, and to be faithful to uh, attend that, and it'll be an opportunity for you to see one another, uh, and that'll be kind of encouraging to kind of see some friendly faces. Even if it is on a screen, it'll still be an encouragement, I, I'm sure. I also want to mention, uh, or I want to say thank you to those who were faithful to uh, give this past week in uh, the tithes and offerings. Uh, some of you gave different ways. Some came and dropped off their offering here at the church. Uh, others mailed them in. Others I gave through our uh, church website. And uh, I just want to say thank you very much for your faithfulness in that area. I know it's not as easy as it was, uh, but uh, Brother uh Jacob, if you could go ahead and drop the link in for our church giving uh, page on our website, and uh, that way you can just click on that, and it'll take you right to the page on our website where you can give. The, the nice thing about it is you can give reoccurring, so you can get it to where it, you know, uh, you're able to give every week or every other week or once a month, however often you want to assign that. It's very easy, very um uh, very user friendly and so hey i even figured it out so i would encourage you to use that um, especially as it's kind of our uh, our governor is kind of trying to tell us to encourage us to stay home i mean it's not that we have to but he's encouraging us to so this is a, a way for that to happen um, and it is completely uh, secure and safe to do so as far as the giving and so i just want to mention that uh, to you um, Next, I want to announce the start of three brand new sermon series that uh, will be uh, beginning here at Cornerstone Baptist Church in the next several days. Uh, tonight, we're going to begin a, a series through some of the Psalms. We're not going to go through all 150 of them. That would take a long time. Uh, we're going to just pick out some of the Psalms that uh, are really comforting in times like what we're going through right now. And so we've called this series uh, Comfort in the Crisis. And so uh, these will be kind of an encouraging time right in the middle of the week uh, as we look at the Psalms. And, and uh, you know, David, well, all the author, human authors of the Psalms, uh, they experienced a wide range of emotions just like you and I experience as we go through this life. And I was reading one commentator and he said uh, these, uh, these human authors experienced um, pouting, doubting, and shouting. And uh, kind of all this... The, from all spectrums of the emotions, they've experienced it all. And guess what? So do we. And so these are easy to relate to and, and certainly encouraging and comforting in times like this. Um, so that's uh, Wednesday nights, and we're going to start that tonight. We kind of started it last week, although I didn't have a, I didn't know it was going to be a series, but I decided to kind of stay in the Psalms as we're going through these Wednesday night uh, services. And for those who normally come on Wednesday nights, we are going through the series from creation of the cross we're going to kind of push the pause button on that one come back to that when we're able to come back together uh, as the lord leads on that okay and then this sunday morning uh, we're going to start a brand new service a series entitled musts of the master all right it's a hard one to say uh, but many times uh, throughout the life of christ he used the word must in his teaching and his communication with his disciples and with others around him. And uh, each one of these musts are really important. When, when, when God says must, we, we better listen. 
All right, and so that's the series we're going to start this coming Sunday morning. Uh, a little deviation from what's going on around us. It'll be kind of a nice little mental break from all the news that's going on around us. And so that'll be, I think, an encouraging time, a challenging time as well. So uh, Sunday mornings at 1045 is when we're going to be doing that series. Um, and then on uh, Sunday night, uh, April 5th, we're going to start a new series through the life of Joseph called The Romans 828 Man. All right, and uh, the life of Joseph uh, definitely embodies the truth of Romans 8.28, uh, like very few others in, uh, in the scriptures. And so we're going to look at that, uh, start that not this Sunday night, but next Sunday night. And I think that'll be an encouraging series as we go through this. It's, it's gonna, we're going to allude to what's going on, but that's not going to be the main thrust of those messages on Sunday nights. We're going to basically start through the life of Joseph and work our way through him through his life and see how the Lord blessed him and how his perspective remained correct uh, through every situation God placed him in. And uh, that, of course, will be an encouragement for us to have the right uh, perspective as we go through whatever we're going through in our lives as well. All right, and so uh, I, I really believe these uh, new three new series is, will uh, help us keep the right perspective during these, this very troubling time. So Stay faithful to watch and listen to these services as we go through them and uh, invite others to come and join you, invite others to come watch with you, okay? Um, and then finally, and as I've mentioned a, a few times in our live streams so far, and that is if you need anything, please let me know. Uh, we are here to serve you. We want to be a blessing and uh, thank you for uh, you know, being faithful, and we want to just encourage you and be fi uh, be a blessing to you during this time. So if you have any needs, um, please let us know. I know we were able to last week go out and get some groceries for one of our uh, ladies, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to serve in that way. So if you have a need like that, please let us know. We want to, we want to help and be an encouragement uh, to you. Uh, and then my, my phone number and email, well, it's not on the screen, but uh, most of you know that. And uh, if you need it, just contact the church, all right? Uh, we're here for you and want to be a blessing. Um, all right, well, this time I want to read a very, very brief uh, missionary letter. And it's not really even a letter. It's just more of an announcement regarding one of our missionaries. Um, and this was sent out from a mission board. And they said this, It is with deep sorrow we inform you of the passing of Verna Griggs, veteran missionary to the Indians. Mrs. Griggs departed this life and entered into the presence of her Lord on Sunday morning after a long illness. And so uh, Brother, Brother Bob and Miss Verna Griggs have been faithful missionaries for, for many decades. And uh, now the Lord has taken uh, Mrs. Griggs home to be with him. And uh, now we want to pray for Brother Bob. I want to mention this uh, to especially the young people out there uh, watching and listening. You know, a lot of the missionaries that we support, and I've mentioned this a few times, but a lot of the missionaries that we support are in the fourth quarter of their, of their ministry. In other words, they're not going to be on the field for a whole bunch longer. And uh, I'm just kind of wondering who's going to replace them. And uh, I would love to see God call some people, some young people out of Cornerstone Baptist Church to go and serve him as missionaries. I realize you're probably not going to get rich being a missionary at least not in this life. Uh, but indeed, your, uh, your treasures will be great in heaven uh, for those who do decide to sacrifice your life and serve the Lord as a missionary. And so we're, we're seeing here some of our missionaries kind of fade off the scene, whether through retirement or here, it was somewhat of a graduation, right? She graduated to heaven, but uh, we need someone to kind of take her place and to take these older missionaries as they're coming off the field to take their place and go into the mission field. So I would encourage you to ask the Lord, Lord, would you have me to be a missionary? Would you want me to serve you with my life? It would be my honor and privilege to do so. That should be the prayer and the heartbeat of every one of our young people here at Cornerstone Baptist Church. I do want to have a moment of prayer for uh, Brother Bob and uh, the family as they go through this uh, time here uh, of loss. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for the faithfulness of the Grigg family. Thank you for 
just their ministry and just hanging in there for all these years. Lord, I thank you for her testimony. Thank you for um, just how you've used them. Now, Lord, I pray that you would grant great comfort and uh, peace to Brother Bob as he goes through this time of loss after many, many decades of marriage and having a partner by his side, and now she is no longer there. Um, Lord, we thank you that she is with you in heaven, and I know that uh, he is very much looking forward to seeing her again, and ultimately, most importantly, seeing you. But uh, Lord, I pray you grant him comfort and wisdom in the days ahead as he continues on in his ministry. Help him, Lord, to know how to best handle the situation Help him, Lord, to um, look to you during this time. I pray also for the rest of the family as they go through this time of loss. Uh, Lord, I'm sure she was a mother and a grandmother and, uh, Lord, a friend to so many others. And I pray, Lord, for those affected by this, that you would grant them peace and comfort uh, through this uh, through this season. And uh, we'll thank you for that. And I pray, Lord, again, that you would ri- raise up young people from our church to go and serve you in the mission field, to not even call it a sacrifice, but to want to volunteer, to want to serve you. And Lord, I pray that you would put that in our heart, in the hearts of our young people. And Lord, if you want to call someone else in our church who's not, not so young, uh, Lord, that would be wonderful too. I pray, Lord, all of us would be uh, just willing to serve you no matter where, no matter how, uh, because Lord, you're certainly worthy of it. And I will thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, this time uh, we're going to get into the message. Our, the series that we're going to be starting tonight, as I mentioned already, is uh, Comfort in the Crisis. And we're going to start that tonight. Um, and uh, so uh, I would invite you at this time to go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 37. And I'm going to have uh, Brother Blake come and uh, read the first eight verses and then have a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the message tonight. Psalm 37, verses 1 through 8. Okay, well, here it is. Uh, Once again, it's Psalms 37, verses 1 through 8. So here's what it says. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, And wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily shalt thou be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him. Who prospereth in his way? Because of the the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we're still able to meet, Lord, even through all this. I pray that you'd help comfort us and give us peace through all the craziness in our world right now, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you give Pastor wisdom as he comes to speak to us tonight. I pray that you'd um, just help him to say the right words, and I pray that you'd help the Holy Spirit to touch us and comfort us tonight, Lord. And I pray all this in your name. Amen. All right, well, so the title tonight is A To-Do List for Times of Crisis. A To-Do List for Times of Crisis. I don't know about you, but I am kind of a list guy. Um, I like to keep lists, and really the thing I like about lists most of all is marking things off my list. That's the thing I like about lists is when I'm done with a task, I either cross it out or if I'm using an app, I'll hit the little check bar, check box, or sometimes it'll even ding, and so that's just a great feeling. Uh, and I like uh, I like lists. Sometimes when I accomplish something, I don't know if you've ever done this. Uh, maybe you can raise your hand in the comments if you've ever accomplished something that you forgot to put on your list, and then you write it on the list just so that you can cross it off and have the feeling of crossing it off. 
I, I, I do that, and I know that's pretty disturbing behavior, I admit it, but it is something that I do. I like lists. Uh, there's someone else that I know that likes lists more than me. Her name is Julie. I married her. My wife has lots of lists. Years ago, I introduced, introduced her to a list app, and I realized that that was a mistake, and I ended up creating a monster. She has lists for literally everything, all right? Uh, even when we go on dates, she'll pull out her list app, and she has things listed to talk to me about. It's a little disturbing. Uh, she has a list of lockdown projects that we as a family are working on right now as we are locked down. Isn't that true? Yes. And uh, anyway, lists are a good thing, though. And, uh, and so we're going to actually look at one uh, this evening, all right? Now, when I read uh, Psalm 37, I see a to-do list for God's people during a time of crisis. And like it or not, unfortunately, all of us probably realize this, we are in a time of crisis. Now, I know that for many of our people, life has completely changed in a very short amount of time. I mean, one month ago, we were all in here, life was normal. But now, here we are at the, uh, towards the end of March here, and life is not normal. Uh, it is completely different. And the future is very uncertain. Well, in times like this, it's hard to know what to do. Uh, when you're in a time of crisis, maybe you kind of go, I, I just, I'm not used to this, so I don't really know what to do. And uh, for all of us, this is a very unprecedented time. Very different. No one's ever experienced a time like this. And so really, few people actually know what to do. And so what, what can we do in this situation? Uh, good news I have for you tonight, and that is Psalm 37 gives us a to-do list for times exactly like this. Okay, in my study of Psalm 37, it's unfortunately unclear as to when exactly Psalm 37 was written in the life of David. We know David wrote it because it says uh, in, underneath Psalm 37, it says a Psalm of David. So we know David is a human author of this. We don't know exactly when in his life exactly that he wrote this. We don't know the circumstances that surrounded the writing of this. Uh, although we do know this, that it was written later on in his life. If you have your Bible open to Psalm 37, if you look in verse 25, he says this, David does, I have been young and now am old. I have not, and yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He said, I have been young and now I'm old. So, so here he is uh, in the golden years of his life. And, uh, but, but what circumstances surrounded Psalm 37, we don't, we don't have a real idea. Now the theme of the psalm deals with the enemies of God and the enemies of God's people. Or what he used here many times uh, was the words evildoers, workers of iniquity, the wicked. Um, and so he was talking about them and their prosperity and how they seem to be doing well and uh, God's people's response to all of that. And uh, so much so that it was a uh, very much a crisis in David's life. And now David may, faced uh, many a battle with these enemies over the course of his life, and he was all too familiar with times of crisis. So he kind of had an idea of how to respond during these times of crisis. So he shared with his readers, which are you and I tonight, uh, a to-do list for times of crisis. And so what should we do when we don't know what to do in a time of crisis? There's a lot of people who are going, I don't really know how to handle this. I don't know how to handle the uncertainty of my job situation. I don't know how to uh, figure out if, my, if I'm going to stay healthy through all of this. I, I, I just don't know what my future holds. I don't know what to do as I face all of this. Well, today, tonight, I'm going to give you a to-do list for times of crisis. Okay, first thing, let's go ahead and jump into it. Number one, let's look at number one here. Refuse to fret. So on the to-do list uh, for times of crisis, the first thing that David mentions here in verse number one was is refuse to fret, okay? Number one, he says, fret not thyself. 
because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Uh, fret not. Now the word fret means to glow or grow warm, but not in a good way. It goes further to say to blaze up of anger, zeal, jealousy, and envy. And so as David was saying, hey, when you see these wicked people get so uh, prosperous and, and they seem to be doing well and life for you seems to be so difficult, you can get to the point where you're starting to fret and saying, hey, this isn't fair. This isn't right. That's what fretting is. Now, fretting is a close cousin and very closely related to worry and to anxiety. All right, it's definitely not a helpful thing to do during a time of crisis. By the way, just so you know, the word fret appears seven times in the Word of God, but only three times in the entire book of Psalms. And all three of those times are found right here in Psalm 37. Look in verse number, so it's mentioned in verse number one, but look in verse number seven. He says, rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. And then he says again, he repeats this fret not deal, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Well, verse number eight also mentions the word fret. It says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Um, it's also mentioned in the book of Proverbs. I won't quote all seven times, but uh, Proverbs 24 and verse 19 is very similar to verse 1 of Psalm 37, where it says, Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. Okay, so the first thing on our to-do list during times of crisis is actually to not do something. <laughs> so when we're going through a crisis... Here's our to-do list. Don't fret. Refuse to fret. And so I want to encourage you tonight as you're facing the scenario we're all facing. Don't fret. Don't get envious at those who maybe have it better than you. Uh, don't get jealous of them. And, and maybe I would also say this. Don't, get, don't start worrying and, and getting anxious. And I know that's our, our knee-jerk reaction. And he says this first. This is the first thing on the list. And he says it first because I believe this is our first natural reaction in a scenario like this. Because when a crisis happens, our, our knee-jerk reaction is to fret. And I want to encourage us to not do that. But to follow the advice of the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4. And verse number 6 where he says, Be careful for nothing. Oh, Paul, you meant for nothing unless it's the coronavirus situation, then we're allowed to be careful. Then we're allowed to fret. Then we're allowed to worry and be anxious. No, no, he said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that's what we talked about Sunday night, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, it's like it's going to keep your heart and mind right during this time. And that's what we all need, right? Because our minds and our hearts are, are tempted to worry and to fret and to be anxious and to be careful. But the first thing on David's to-do list here in times of crisis is to refuse to fret. So first thing, Cornerstone Baptist Church, let's not be a fretting people. Uh, let's be... Uh, let, let's put that on our to-do list. Do not fret. Refuse to fret. All right, number two. What's second on the to-do list here in Psalm 37? Next is to rely on the Lord, to rely on the Lord. Look in verse number three. Uh, here David says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You know, trust here insinuates calmly confiding in God. Calmly confiding in God. To leave all of this in his very capable hands. To remember that he is indeed in control. Now I believe this whole situation is hardest for people who are used to being the one calling the shots. They like to be 
large and in charge. They like to be in control. And now all of a sudden they realize they're not in control and it's a very scary place. They're not used to being here, but here they are. It's a beautiful opportunity to trust in the Lord, to re rely on the Lord. Uh, this concept is repeated a few other times here in uh, this passage, Psalm 37 and verse number 5. David said, commit thy way into the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. If the Lord's going to direct our path during this time, he's going to direct our steps during this time. It requires a little bit of trust. It requires a little bit of, Lord, I know that you're in, you're in control, and I'm just going to trust you. Verse number 40 says, The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So the second thing on the list, the second action item, the second to-do item on our to-do list in times of crisis is to rely on the Lord. It reminds me of a very famous and very familiar verse. Two verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I said, boy, you said that really quick. I didn't even listen to that. If I said it slow, you probably wouldn't have listened to it either because it's so familiar. But I want to take a moment and break it down for, for us so that we think about this a little bit more during this time. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, was the one who penned Proverbs chapter 3, and he said this, trust in the Lord, and that's what we've been talking about here. And then notice this, with all thine heart, with all thine heart. So to trust in the Lord, not just kind of, sort of, no, no, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I got an amen on that one. Thank you for whoever said amen to that. I know there's other people saying amen, but I, I don't see them all. So anyway, uh, but trust the Lord with all thine heart. Not just kind of trust him, not just sort of trust him, but trust him with all our heart during this time. Lean not unto thine understanding. And, and that's probably pretty easy for us to do right now because no one really understands how we're going to get through this. Uh, just in our, own, in our own mind. So we have to trust him. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he is going to direct our paths. So the second action item on the to-do list for times of crisis is to rely on the Lord. But thirdly, what's the third action item? There are seven of them, by the way, and I'm going to try to go through these quickly tonight. Um, the third one is to respond with righteousness. To respond with righteousness. If you look here in verse number three, David says, Hey, in times of crisis, you need to trust in the Lord. And then he says, and do good. To do good. You know, I want to just encourage us during this season to keep doing right. To keep responding with righteousness. Keep doing good. Verse 27 continues this thought. He says, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Now, I am confident, I guarantee the devil would love to use this time to get you and I into sinful things. When we have a little less accountability, maybe maybe a little more idle time, the devil would love to use this as an opportunity to get into our hearts, to get a, a foot in there when the Bible says, neither give place to the devil. We talked about on Sunday morning how... Uh, God, or Jesus said to Peter, hey, look, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And can I just encourage you and let you know, Cornerstone Baptist Church, that during this season, the devil desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He is as a roaring lion seeking about whom he may devour. And he's looking for someone who's uh, not going to be doing good, going to drop the guard a little bit. Because you know what? Well, we're not at church. I mean... No one else, I don't get to see the preacher anymore. You know what? It doesn't matter if you get to see the preacher. God's watching us all the time. Do good. Re respond with righteousness during this time. 
I want to encourage you regarding your relationship with the Word of God. During this time, it's important for us to stay grounded in the Bible. Uh, Verse 31, look at this. Look at verse 31 here. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Uh, Maybe if you've been saved for any length of time, I'm sure you've heard of the, the phrase backslide. Uh, if you want to prevent yourself from backsliding during this time, which I hope you do as a believer, um, I hope that you want to keep yourself from backsliding. The way that that's going to happen is if the law of God is in your heart. Well, how is the law of God going to be in your heart if you're not reading it? God wants us to be in his word and his word in us. Well, how is that going to happen? We're going to have to take daily time to crack the book open And to read it for ourselves. When you were a little one, your mom and dad had to feed you the little, you know, smashed up peas and all of that. But at some point, you had to learn to eat on your own. Same thing, Christian. You and I have to learn to eat on our own and to feed ourselves spiritually on our own. Yes, we need uh, the public instruction like you're receiving tonight. but, But you need to be receiving it yourself personally, individually. This is the time to respond with righteousness, not to drop the guard and say, well, I'm going to go and uh, watch whatever I want to watch. He would love, the devil would love to get us involved into ungodly entertainment and maybe even into sinful substances. But I'm telling you, God doesn't want us to. So respond with righteousness, depart from evil and do good during this time. When a time of crisis, it's not the time to run to sin. It's time to run to righteousness. So draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. We talked about that on on Friday. All right, number four. What else is on uh, the to-do list in times of crisis? Uh, Number four is rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. In verse number four, look at this. Here David said, Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You might be thinking, hey, look, there's really not a lot lot of silver lining in the circumstances of my life right now. I mean, I'm looking at the clouds and they're pretty dark and I really don't see very many silver linings here. I mean, I'm trying to find some positive, but they're few and far between. I'm telling you, when you're finding your joy in the Lord, then you can indeed... Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, That was the words of Paul there. Look, we as God's people can still and should have a smile on our faces during a time like this. And I realize it's hard and I realize it's tough and I don't want to minimize what you're going through. But look, when your eyes are on those things, then yes, it can be very hard and your face and your countenance will show it. But when your eyes aren't on the things going on around you, but on your Lord who's controlling all things, then you, can have a, then you can have some joy. Then you can have a smile on your face. Our circumstances will ebb and flow. And yet many people are basing their happiness and joy in these things that are constantly changing. I think about the man, of, the man named Solomon, David's son, Solomon. He was a man who had the ultimate circumstance for his life. I mean, if you could have the life that no worries at all, it was Solomon. I mean, talk about the American dream. He had that and then some. He had position. He had power. He had all the possessions you could ever want. He had all the pleasure you could ever want. He had it all and to the fullest. And yet he still found that nothing under the sun can really satisfy Though our circumstances are a little less than ideal at the moment, if you're looking at your circumstances for your source of joy, you're looking in the wrong place. That's why he says here in verse number four, delight thyself also in your circumstances. That's not what he said. He said, delight yourself, uh, thyself also in the Lord because he never changes. So rejoice in the Lord. Psalm 16, verse 11 The psalmist said, Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence. Here it is, is fullness of joy. 
So if you're looking for happiness in your circumstances, you're looking in the wrong place. But if you're looking in your relationship to the, you're looking towards your relationship with the Lord, then you're looking in the right place because in his presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so I want to encourage us as we go through this time to rejoice in the Lord. So instead of just focusing on the blessings, let's focus on the blesser during this time. All right, number five. Number five, release your burdens unto the Lord. Release your burdens unto the Lord. So one of the action items, the fifth action item on the to-do list here, is to release your burdens unto the Lord. And, and certainly we have burdens at the moment. And so we're to release them unto the Lord. Look in verse number five. He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Commit thy way into the Lord. As I began to research this and, and figure out what, what David's trying to say here, it, and uh, if you have a study Bible, it, it could be that uh, next to verse 5, it should say the Hebrew commit there means to roll thy way upon. Uh, and so we're to basically let these burdens that we're carrying, maybe picture yourself carrying a big boulder, and, and the Bible says to commit thy way, or, or the Hebrew meaning is to roll thy way upon, to take this burden that we're carrying and, and roll it upon the Lord. Because guess what? He's much stronger than you. He's infinitely stronger than you. And he can handle the burdens a lot better than you and I can. Psalm 55 and verse 22 says this, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I, I want to just focus in on one word on that verse. Casting all your care upon him. And the word is a three-letter word. starts with A and has two L's in it. It's the word all. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth. For you he does care for you and because he cares for you you can cast your all of your care upon him you can release your burdens unto the lord and i know some of you are carrying some burdens right now and look i know that some we have to carry but i want to encourage you to bur to release these burdens unto the lord and to cast your care upon him uh, he's able to carry you through this so if you're trying to worry and you're staying up late night and, uh, you know, losing sleep and losing hair, no bald jokes. I'm glad you're not here because there's no bald jokes. And I'm sure there may be a couple that will come in the comments. But anyway, uh, I, we, we don't need to be losing hair. We don't need to. Oh, we do, have, we do have one. Okay. We have an amen. My son said amen. Oh, man. Okay. Kids giving the ball jokes. Okay. Uh, we don't need to be losing sleep. We don't need to be losing hair. God never intended for that to happen. He wants us to give him our burdens. So release your burdens unto the Lord. And then number six, let me, uh, me kind of wrap it up here with these last two. Rest in the Lord. Verse number seven. Here David says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself uh, because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Uh, verse number 34 it continues this thought. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. So rest in the Lord. Uh, Psalm 27. Uh, I love Psalm 27. And, and in verse 14, the last verse of that psalm says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Be patient with God, because guess what? He's been patient with you, hasn't he? Uh, maybe we should give him a little patience. He's been abundantly patient with me, I know that. And so when something is taking a little longer, I don't need to go panic. I don't need to go say, God, where are you? Hey, why don't we be a little patient with him? Because, friend, he's been patient with us. Uh, his timing, by the way, I do want to remind us all, is absolutely perfect. He's never late. He's never early. He's exactly right on time with everything. 
Now, I know we all want this crisis that we're all going through to be over today. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen that way. But you know, it's going to be over exactly when God wants it to be over. And you know, we need to rest in Him and rest in His timing and rest in who He is. Let's be patient and rest in the Lord during this time. This is time. Hey, if you and I should be sleeping just as good during this time than as we were before all this happened. You and I should not be losing sleep and having ulcers develop. No, we should be resting in the Lord and trusting in Him. Last uh, thing, last action item on uh, the to-do list. Thank you for the amen over there. Uh, last action item uh, in the... Uh, in the to-do list here for times of crisis is number seven, resist anger. Resist anger. Verse number eight, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. One commentator uh, said on this verse, he said, do not allow your mind to be excited with envious, fretful, wrathful, or murmurings feeling, murmuring feelings against God because he bears patiently with them. And because they are allowed a temporary prosperity and triumph, again, going back to the main thrust of this passage is uh, the prosperity of the wicked. And uh, he says, look, don't, don't get angry. Resist anger. He says, the, the commentator continues, be calm, whatever may be the wickedness of the world. The supreme direction belongs to God and he will dispose of it in the best way, and, and that definitely applies to the main thrust of this passage, but, but it also applies to the situation we all find ourselves in right now. One tempting thought is to get angry uh, with God for allowing this to happen in my life. God, everything was going great until you messed it up. I mean, my job was going well. I was, I was doing good. I was climbing the corporate ladder, but then this happened. Thanks a lot, Lord. If we're not careful, that could be our attitude. And so the encouragement here is to resist anger ultimately toward God because that's who anger is always directed towards. When the nation of Israel, as they faced times of crisis, they got angry at Moses, but you know who took it personally? It was the Lord. Because anger towards an authority or towards someone is ultimately directed towards the Lord. So please resist anger during this time. And, and I'm not saying anyone is like that, but if, if that feeling starts to creep up in your heart, well, remember this to-do list and say, oh, I need to check that off the list and say I'm going to resist anger as that uh, tempting thought comes into my mind. I'm not going to get angry at God. I'm going to trust him and know that he is good and that he's going to work this out for my good. And for his glory, and really that's what it's all about anyway. It's not about my comfort. It's not about my bank account. It's not about any of that. It's about his glory. That's what my life is about. So we need to remember to not get angry. Okay, so what should we do as God's people during a time of crisis? Here's the, here's the action items. Number one, refuse to fret. That's a do not do. <laughs> do not do that one. So refuse to fret. Uh, rely on the Lord during this time. Respond with righteousness. This is a time to draw close to the Lord, not to go away from Him. A time to rejoice in the Lord. Time to find your joy and your uh, enjoyment in life in your relationship with God. And then to release your burdens unto the Lord, rest in the Lord, and to resist anger. I'm going to ask Brother Jacob to go ahead and post that uh, little outline in the comments. I think he just did or did a while ago, one of the two. But um, that'll help you. You can maybe put that on your personal to-do list as you go through this time. And so, uh, yeah, go ahead and clean. Clean out that closet. Sort through your sock drawer. Go through those boxes in the garage that have been sitting there for years. But don't forget to refuse to fret. Rely on the Lord, respond with righteousness, rejoice in the Lord, release your burdens on the Lord, and rest in the Lord, and then finally resist anger. Don't forget those in the midst of all the other lockdown projects that you may be working on during this time of crisis.
add these thoughts to your to-do list. Well, let's go and have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll let you go tonight. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for how it helps us in uh, crazy times like this. Lord, what a to-do list. Um, one that we would be very wise as believers, as your people, to adopt for our personal to-do list. Help us, Lord, with these. And Lord, I know we may not remember each and every one of them, but Lord, as, as the tempting thoughts come into our minds, help us to remember these. Please bring them back into our minds and help us to accomplish these tasks. Help us to do them. Now, Lord, these are direct commands from you, ultimately. And help us, Lord, to be obedient. And I pray, Lord, that you'd help us through this time and that you would grant us great comfort in the crisis. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, finally, I would just like to say I love you very much, and uh, I really look forward to seeing you all again as soon as possible. I do hope it is soon, uh, but until then, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and uh, may the Lord just watch over and protect you, and uh, know that I love you, and I'll be praying for you as we go through this week. And uh, if there's anything that I can do for you or our church can do for you, please let us know. Uh, if you have a prayer request, please let us know. We want to pray for you during this time. Sure love you. We'll see you. Uh, well, you'll see me hopefully on Sunday morning at 1045. God bless you. Bye-bye.